Welcome back to the video course on fluid mechanics. So, in fluid kinematics in the last lecture we were discussing about the potential flows. We have seen uh, the, we can define the velocity potential as u is equal to del phi by del x, v is equal to del phi by del y and w is equal to del phi by del z and then uh, consequence, the consequence of rotationality of flow field uh, we can uh, define for three dimensional flows and uh, the flows since we can uh, say the potential flow which we have defined is with respect to the, the, uh, the say rotational flow fields further we have discussed about the potential flow then uh, stream functions uh, and then um, we have de derived the Laplace equation which governs the inviscid incompressible rotational flow fields. So, potential flows we have seen in the how we can uh, define a problem and then how the boundary conditions are uh, defined and uh, as we discussed uh, potential flows uh, which is uh, um, the, the, prob the theories applicable for inviscid incompressible rotational flow fields governed by the Laplace equation and lines of constant potential are called equipotentials and um, then uh, a stream function is also defined and then the, the um, lines so, constant stream function is called stream lines and uh, uh, we have also seen uh, some examples re related to the potential flows. So, today further we will discuss about the potential flow and then uh, uh, we will uh, see the basic potential flows and then superposition of potential flow uh, uh, further. So, potential flow is as we have seen it is governed by the Laplace equation and uh, potential flow solutions are always approximate since most of the real fluid say the assumption in potential flow is flow is rotational say in uh, the, the uh, viscosity is uh, neglected and uh, hence we are say, assuming as frictionless. So, potential flow solutions are always approximate since fluid is assumed to be frictionless. So, exact solutions uh, are got from the potential flow theory represents approximate solution to real flow problems. So, uh, even, the, even though we can derive the exact solution for potential flows as far, but as far as real flu, for fluid flow is concerned uh, this is uh, an approximation for the uh, reality or the real fluid flow. So, so, uh, the exact solution obtained uh, in potential flow or potential flow theory by using potential flow theory gives only or represents approximate solution to the real flow pr problem. So, the potential flow which we have discussed uh, so as we have seen here, the we are assuming the flow as potential, but the reality it is a difference. So, the solutions which are deriving for the uh, potential flow are just approximation for the real fluid flow is constant. So, we have already seen the Laplace equation for the in the Cartesian coordinate system we have seen the uh, Laplace equation and now for potential flow the in cylindrical coordinate system generally we can describe this uh, del phi as uh, as shown in this slide here del phi is equal to del phi by del r. Uh, e, e, e r plus 1 by r del phi by del, del theta e, e theta plus del phi by del e z e, e, e z. So, this um, in the uh, so cylindrical coordinate system we are defining in terms of r theta and e z. So, we can use the, the uh, unit vector e r e theta and e z and then we can represent the radial velocity as del phi by del r and the uh, the tangential velocity v theta we can represent as 1 by r del phi by del theta and v z is represented as del phi by del e z. So, in the cylindrical coordinate system the potential flow is represented uh, with, with respect to r theta and e z and uh, this can be represented in terms of say here uh, the radial velocity. So, in a cylindrical coordinate system uh, the parameters which are uh, described are in the uh, cylindrical coordinate system it is r theta and e z. So, the velocity or the parameters can be described in terms of the, the, velo the, the, the as we have seen for the Cartesian coordinate system we are representing the velocity in x y z as u v w. So, correspondingly in cylindrical coordinate system we can represent, represent the, the radial velocity v r and then the tangential velocity v theta and the velocity v z. So, which are defined here as uh, v r is equal to delta 
del phi by del r with respect to the potential function and then uh, the uh, the tangential velocity is represented as 1 by r del phi by del theta and uh, uh, the uh, the vz is represented as del phi by del z. So, finally, the velocity can be represented as uh, v, v r e, e r the unit vectors plus v theta e theta plus v z e z and finally, the uh, uh, Laplace equation in the cylindrical coordinate system can be represented as 1 by r del by del r of r del phi by del r plus 1 by r square del square phi by del theta square plus del phi uh, del square phi by del z square is equal to 0. So, this equation represents the the uh, Laplace equation cylindrical coordinate system. So, the problem some types of problem where the uh, say we will be using r th uh, theta and z coordinate system or the cylindrical coordinate system we can use the equation in this particular form. So, now we have defined the potential function. So, also we have earlier defined the uh, the stream function uh, here. Um, so, with respect to the uh, stream function uh, we can uh, represent the uh, the velocity as say for rotational function uh, flow we have already seen uh, the uh, uh, stream function can be defined as u is equal to del psi by del y and uh, the velocity in y direction is minus del psi by del x where psi is the, the stream function and then uh, say the velocities here are represented in terms of x and y direction. So, this is x, this is y and uh, psi is the stream function. So, uh, with respect to to, so, when we consider two dimension flow, so with respect to psi function uh, stream function we can write u is equal to del psi by del y and v is equal to minus del psi by del x which we have derived uh, earlier. So, from the condition of irrotationality uh, we can derive uh, we can write del v by del x is equal to del u by del y uh, from the condition of irrotationality which we have uh, seen earlier. Uh, by substituting say omega z is equal to 0, we have uh, shown that del v by del x is equal to del u by del y. So, now if we substitute for u and v uh, from this equations here as shown, then we will get uh, del square psi uh, by del x square plus del square psi by del y square is equal to 0. So, this is uh, another form of the Laplace equation uh, say derived from the condition of irrotationality and the definition of the stream function. So, finally, we get del square psi by del x square plus del square psi by uh, del y square is equal to 0. So, this is again Laplace equation in, uh, in terms of stream function. So, Laplace equation in terms of stream function. So, depending upon the problem, uh, if we can represent the flow field in terms of um, say potential function or uh, if we can represent the flow field in terms of uh, stream function, uh, we can uh, write either the of these e two equations say if we represent uh, phi then we can use del square phi is equal to 0 for the potential flow problems. If we can represent the flow field as a stream function then we can use del square uh, psi is equal to del square psi is equal to 0. So, both equations are valid uh, for potential flow theorems depending upon the potential flow problems depending upon whether we are using the potential function or stream function. So, uh, the stream function uh, is uh, similar to what we have seen in the case of um, uh, the the potential function. So, in the case of stream function also we can represent the in terms of cylindrical coordinate system r theta and z. So, uh, since z co coordinate system is not coming in the case of stream, fu stream function or we, since we are considering two dimensions. So, v theta is equal to minus del psi by del r. This is the definition of the, the tangential velocity with respect to the stream function psi. So, v theta is equal to minus del psi by del r and v r is equal to 1 by r del psi by del theta. So, in cylindrical coordinate uh, system uh, r theta we can represent the stream fu function with respect to stream function we can write the tangential velocity as minus del psi by del r and the, uh, the radial velocity v r is equal to 1 by r del psi by del theta. And the change in value of the stream function is related to the 
uh, the volume rate of flows. That means, uh, if you draw the stream function uh, with respect to say stream lines, say if uh, we consider a flow field uh, like this and then if we can draw the stream lines uh, like this, so psi 1, psi 2, psi 3 etcetera. So, the change in value, so uh, from uh, the change in value of the stream function from one position to another that represents actually the volume of, of uh, so if this is for psi 1 psi 2 then the volume rate of flow q is equal to say between psi 2 and psi 1 we can write the volume rate of flow q is equal to psi 2 minus psi 1 uh, that is q 1. So, similarly between this uh, psi 2 and psi 3 we can write q 2 is equal to uh, psi 3 minus uh, uh, the stream function psi, psi 3 minus psi 2. So, a stream function uh, q is uh, say the, the uh, volume rate of flow can be represent as the difference between the stream function. So, uh, this approach the potential flow with respect to the, the uh, stream function we can use to calculate the volume rate of flow between the fluid flow which we will be considering. So, now with respect to this uh, stream function let us consider a small example here. So, you can see example is for, for stream function say for a, a fluid flow uh, with a fluid flow with a radial velocity is given as V r is equal to lambda by r square uh, cos theta and if V theta the tangential velocity is equal to 0 at theta is equal to 0 determine the stream function psi and uh, V theta for the fluid flow. So, the problem is say the data given are in terms of the, the cylindrical coordinate system r and theta. So, it is given the radial velocity is already given v r is equal to lambda by r square cos theta where lambda is a constant and then a condition is given v theta is equal to 0 at theta is equal to 0 we have to determine the stream function psi and then uh, the radial velocity v, the tangential velocity v theta for the fluid flow. So, already given v r is the radial velocity is already given v r is equal to lambda by r square cos theta. So, this with respect to our definition here v r is equal to uh, 1 by r del psi by del theta. So, this lambda by r square cos theta is equal to v r that is equal to 1 by r del psi by del theta or we can write del psi by del theta is equal to lambda by r cos theta. So, now uh, we, we got an expression for psi with respect to theta as del psi by del theta is equal to lambda by r cos theta. So, now to get the stream function uh, we can just integrate this uh, uh, with respect to theta. So, if we integrate with respect to theta uh, del psi by del theta if we integrate we get psi is equal to lambda by r sin theta uh, f r. So, lambda uh, the stream function is obtained as psi is equal to lambda by r sin theta that is equal to f r. Now, if you want to determine the radi the, the tangential velocity v theta the definition is minus del psi by del r. So, here we have already derived the uh, the stream function. So, we can just differentiate it with respect to r to get the, the, the tangential velocity. So, if we di differentiate this expression with respect to r, we get uh, v, v theta is equal to lambda by r squared sin theta plus f dash r which is a constant. So, uh, we already so one condition is given that the tangential velocity v theta uh, is equal to 0 at theta is equal to 0. So, this condition we can apply here. So, v theta is equal to theta is equal to 0. So, we get f r uh, f f dash r is equal to 0 this constant. So, uh, now finally, we can write we can obtain v theta is equal to lambda by r square sin theta which is the expression uh, asked in the question. So, we have we are here we have found the stream function as lambda by r cos uh, uh, lambda by r sin theta and we got the the uh, the tangential velocity v component v theta is equal to lambda by r square sin theta. So, uh, like by uh, as shown in this problem by using this kinds of uh, say 
the uh, polar coordinate system or cylindrical coordinate system, we can solve uh, this kinds of problem in terms of theta, uh, the uh, the uh, radial velocity or in that in terms of V r the radial velocity or the tangential velocity V theta and with respect to r and psi, we can determine various uh, functions like V theta, V r or the string function. So, uh, this is about the uh, representation of the, uh, the potential flow with respect to the stream function. So, now as I mentioned we can represent uh, say the, the uh, where the stream uh, the lines are constant psi uh, we can draw like in this figure shown here. So, psi 1 psi 2 psi 3. So, these are line, lines of constant uh, psi. So, uh, since uh, the, the, these lines are called streamlines. So, we can see that uh, rem, uh, there is no flow across a streamline, uh, flow is in the direction of the streamline then and uh, the when uh, once the streamline with respect to streamlines concept, we, uh, there cannot be any flow across a streamline. So, flow across this direction or uh, di the uh, across the streamline is impossible. So, we can use this uh, uh, the streamline concept as a uh, since at every point the streamline is tangent to the velocity, we can say that there is no flow across a streamline. So, this means that a streamline we can uh, consider as a uh, as a solid boundary. So, that flow cannot cross across a streamline. So, the streamline concept is very useful to solve many of the fluid mechanics uh, problems, uh, especially when we can approximate to, to certain extent as potential, potential flows. So, the streamlines there should not, cannot be any flow across a streamline and uh, then uh, the, the streamline can be considered as a uh, solid boundary where we can consider as a boundary between two streamlines to solve uh, various uh, flow, flow problems. So, streamlines is defined here. Now, with respect to these uh, streamlines and also uh, say the for a plane of irrotational flow, we have defined the potential function and the stream function. So, we have already seen that both satisfies the Laplace equation. So, the Laplace equation which we have derived a del square phi is equal to 0 or del square psi is equal to 0. So, both the stream function and uh, both the potential function satisfies the, uh, the uh, for plane rotation flow satisfy the Laplace equation. So, now, as per our definition, if we use the definition of the uh, stream function and potential function, we can write this dy by dx along psi is equal to constant as uh, is equal to v by u that is the lines of constant psi or which are as we have discussed uh, they are the stream lines and then dy by dx along the po potential phi is equal to constant that is equal to as per definition that is equal to minus u by v where uh, u is the velocity in the x direction v is the velocity in the y direction. So, these lines are called constant of uh, where the potentials phi are constant and these lines are called uh, equipotential line. So, we can with respect to the concept of the, uh, the potential velocity potential and the stream function, we can uh, draw the stream lines where dy by dx along psi is equal to constant which is equal to v by u uh, which are th called the stream lines and then we can uh, 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 say we can draw lines where the potentials are constant or dy by dx along along phi is equal constant as minus v by u uh, that is lines of constant uh, potential which are called equipotential line. So, this equipotential lines uh, are we, if you when we draw uh, with respect to fluid flow, uh, we can see that this equipotential lines are orthogonal to the, the streamline. So, if you draw here, you can see that these are the streamlines here. So, and if you plot the, uh, the potential lines, you can see that uh, these are orthogonal to the, the that means 90 degree angle. The, so, this is 5 1, 5 2, 5 3 like that 5 4. Uh, so, the potential equipotential lines we can draw and then the stream lines already drawn here. So, this uh, stream the uh, equipotential lines we can see that they are orthogonal to the stream lines at all points where they intersect or it, it, when this equipotential line intersects uh, say with respect to stream lines at 90 degree or they are orthogonal uh, since the product of slope is minus 1 and then this when we draw the the stream lines and then when we draw the equipotential line this uh, lines together 
consists a family of streamlines and equipotential lines called the flow net. So, this flow net concept is uh, very useful in many of the uh, fluid flow problems. So, flow net consists of family of streamlines and equipotential lines. So, we have seen how to we can draw streamlines with respect to the direction of the fluid flow <coughs> and we can also draw the and the equipotential potential line. So, together uh, they, they intersect at or they are orthogonal uh, or the product of slope is minus 1 and then this family of curves with respect to streamlines and equipotential potential lines form the flow net. So, this here you can see the flow net, flow net consists of streamlines and equipotential potential lines. So, here and the streamlines are drawn here uh, just like this uh, red color and yellow uh, color and equipotential lines 5 is, is equal to constant are also drawn. So, they form the flow net. So, this flow net concept is very useful uh, in uh, many of the fl flow problems. So, this for uh, flow net we can use for visualization of flow patterns uh, as uh, uh, shown here. Uh, it can be also used to get a graphical solution for uh, fluid flow problems and uh, we can also determine the velocities and discharge can be obtained from the flow net since velocity is inversely proportional to the streamlined spacing. So, here this figure shows a flow net uh, for a fluid flow in a bend. So, here there is a uh, flow through a bend. So, the streamlines are plotted here like this and then equipotential lines are also plotted. So, this uh, if you can draw the, uh, the streamlines and then equipotential then finally get the flow net, uh, we can that gives a good visual, visualization of the flow pattern as far as the fluid flow is concerned, uh, for especially for potential flows or which the, the flows which we can be approximated as potential flow. So, uh, many of the say uh, problems like uh, flow through an earth dam and we can use this concept, concept of the, the uh, say for example, if we consider uh, an earth dam like this. So, here, so in this earth dam, here upstream there is a, so here let us assume that for this, <coughs> here it is impermeable. So, here if the head is or the potential here is <coughs> say 10 meter and here it is 2 meter then you can see that there is a free surface here and then with respect to this uh, figure for this earth dam problem. So, we can draw the streamlines for this and then correspondingly also we can plot the the equipotential lines. So, which gives the flow net. So, the flow net for an earth dam is drawn here. So, with respect to this once the flow net is drawn we can uh, calculate we can use this flow net pattern for the representation of for to, to determine the uh, it calculate the velocities or discharge since the velocity is inversely uh, proportional to the streamline spacing. So, uh, this concept of the streamlines or the flow net with respect to streamlines and in the equipotential lines uh, the, 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 there are large number of applications uh, like in earth dams or flow through a bend different kinds. So, where, wherever the flow problems can be uh, approximated as uh, a uh, uh, approximated as potential flow we can use the concept of the flow net. So, now we will also consider here another uh, problem with respect to a flow beneath a beneath an a concrete dam. So, here in this slide you can see there is a concrete dam here. So, this is the dam position and then we are considering a domain say 60 meter length this is 0 0 then 60 0 and here a depth of 60 by 15 and here 0 20. So, uh, this we are now considering the the, uh, the, the, the there exists a concrete dam. Uh, on a, per, a permeable foundations like this. So, 
And now you can see that here the 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 flow condition, the boundary condition here, it is five meter depth, and uh, here uh, it is the the downstream edge, it is uh, five meter. But uh, th there is a level difference. So here the uh, the boundary conditions here, the potential if you consider with respect to this line as datum, here you can see that there is a potential difference of 10 meters. So, on the upstream side, so, so the flow comes this side. So, the upstream side the phi is equal to the potential function phi is equal to 10, 10 meter and downstream side this is the water level. So, uh, the downstream side phi is equal to 5, 5 meter and uh, since we are considering this boundary, uh, this boundary at the bottom as impermeable, we can say that del phi by del n that means uh, there is no flux can cross this boundary. So, del phi by del n is equal to 0 and here also del phi by del n is equal to 0 and this side also del phi by del n is equal to 0 and also we can assume that stream, 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 stream function psi is equal to 0, psi is equal to 0 here and here also psi is equal to 0 and then similarly say here there is a concrete uh, bed. Uh, and then uh, flow the stream function here let us assume psi is equal to uh, 10 uh, and um, then uh, on this side also del phi by del since it is concrete dam and then up upstream there is a concrete bed uh, downstream also there is a concrete bed. So, del phi by del n is equal to 0 on this phase also. So, with respect to this problem we can solve now this uh, the equations of the uh, say del square phi is equal to 0 uh, we can solve and del square psi is equal to 0. The Laplace equation in terms of phi equipotential fun the potential function and then the, the Laplace equation in terms of stream function also we can solve in this particular domain the all the boundary conditions are given here and then we can determine the uh, so phi and psi at various points like this uh, at various points we can find the, the potential function and the stream functions and then we can interpolate between to get the, the stream lines and the potential lines like in this figure. So, here we have drawn say with respect to the problem given here and the boundary conditions and then we use the, the Laplace equation in terms of phi and then we use, is, use the Laplace equation in terms of psi that is square phi is equal to 0 and that is square psi is equal to 0 and with respect to this boundary condition we can um, get the, uh, the potential function and uh, the stream function at various locations and finally, we can plot the, uh, the stream lines like this you can see here the stream lines are plotted uh, like this and then the potential uh, functions are also uh, plotted. So, now a flow net is uh, formed here uh, for the flow beneath the concrete dam and then this is the this can be used for to calculate how much will be the discharge. So, these are this the equipotential lines and uh, these are the stream, stream lines. So, finally, we get a flow net for this particular problem. So, uh, finally, this can be used to find the discharge uh, or the flow which it, which it can go through this porous media from this place to this place and then finally, it will be exiting at this place. So, this can be used to find the, the velocities or discharge between the uh, say with respect to the uh, potential flow uh, equations and potential flow theories. So, potential flow theory has got large number of applications as described in the case of an earth dam here or the flow beneath a uh, concrete dam uh, as described here. So, further this will be this the aspect will be discussed later. So, now uh, after the, uh, the flow nets now we will see some of the basic potential flows. So, uh, the potential flow where the, where the uh, applications where directly we can apply the Laplace equation and where the uh, where simple flows are concerned we can have some basic potential flows like uh, uniform flow like uh, uh, sourcings and uh, uh, doublets. So, this uh, since the potential flows are governed by the Laplace equation which is a linear equation. So, uh, this for the, since the equation is linear we can uh, have a number of particular solution and with this particular solution can be added 
to yield a solution for complex problems. So, if you have got a problem uh, like say where we, we, we the potential function say for example, potential function phi 1, uh, uh, phi 2, phi 3 etcetera are uh, known then uh, say since the Laplace equation which we are concerned del square phi is equal to 0 or del square psi is equal to 0, this is a linear form of the linear equation. So, we can uh, superpose uh, or we can add uh, the, the, uh, to yield a solution for complex problems. So, if phi 1, uh, phi 2, phi 3 etcetera are the solution obtained then uh, for various problems. So, we can add, uh, we can superpose these problems to of uh, the elementary flows uh, like uh, uniform flow like um, uh, say a flow with a source and sink then we can superpose together to get complex um, flow problem. So, uh, this concept we can use to solve many of the uh, complex uh, uh, problems which can be uh, finally approximated with respect to the potential theory. So, this we will discuss uh, before going to the complex problems we will see this um, uh, here the uh, basic or the potential basic potential flows. So, the basic potential flow as mentioned uh, elementary flows are uniform flow, uh, source and sink and the uh, vortex. So, these are the elementary flows uh, which we are uh, which which are uh, which we are considered which we consider in the potential flow theory uniform flow, source and sink and vortex. So, each one of this we will discuss in detail. So, now we will discuss this uh, basic potential flows, first we will see the uniform flow. So, uniform flow uh, say the, the, this is the simplest uh, plane flow described by either stream function or velocity potential. So, the flow parameters are uniform say uh, which we can consider, so, some of the flows like uh, say flow uh, um, say um, the ground water flow without any pumping or the, the velocity is very low then it can be approximated as a uniform flow flow sometimes depending upon the flow conditions. So, the uniform flow concept is uh, we can the most simple simple most uh, or simplest uh, plane flow where uh, there are no complexities and there are no uh, source sourcing or nothing. So, the simple the uniform flow the uh, we can use the potential flow theory uh, we can approximate using potential flow theory. So, for this uh, we can either represent using the stream function approach or stream function equation or the velocity potential equation and the streamlines and uh, the streamlines are or straight uh, and parallel as far as the 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 potential flow is concerned and the magnitude of the velocity is constant so here you can say that it can be horizontal or inclined but um, the the uh, as you can see here in this slide uh, say the um, the streamlines are all straight and parallel so that is the the um, the peculiarity of the uniform flow and the magnitude of the velocity is constant so here you can see the phi is equal to phi 1 or phi is equal to phi 2 and then the streamline streamlines are psi is equal to psi 1, psi is equal to psi 2, psi is equal to psi 3, psi is equal to psi 4 like that. So, like this we can uh, represent the uniform flow, the potential equipotential lines and uh, st the streamlines are drawn uh, say as shown in this for the uniform flow or it can be inclined like with respect to an angle alpha uh, and here also phi and phi 1 and phi 2 are represent the equipotential lines and psi so psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 psi 4 represent the the streamline streamline so with respect to this say we will now use the 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 potential flow th theory so as we have represented the velocity in the x direction can be uh, um, represented u is equal to del phi by del x and the uh, say for this particular pr pr problem say uh, del phi by del y is, is equal to 0 for uh, say for the case of uniform flow. So, uh, this is the flow is only in, in uh, one direction. Uh, so, uh, we can represent del phi by del x is equal to u and then uh, we can write phi is equal to u x plus c. So, where c is an arbitrary constant and this can be set to 0. So, that we can for uniform flow we can write phi is equal to u x where u is the velocity in the x direction here. So, phi is equal to u x plus c and uh, c is an arbitrary constant which if we set to 0 phi is equal to u x. So, that we can write now del psi by del y is equal to uh, 
uh, u so as per the definition of the stream function del psi by del y is equal to 0 and then also for uniform flow del psi by del x is equal to 0 since we assume that v is equal to as per uh, the definition of the uniform flow the, the uh, streamlines are straight and parallel and the magnitude of the velocity is constant. So, with respect to this we can write that uh, uh, phi is equal to u x and then psi is equal to u y. So, that uh, del uh, phi by del x is equal to u and del psi by del y is equal to u and finally, we get the expression for the, uh, the potential as phi is equal to u x plus c and the expression for or u, u x plus c if we set uh, c is equal to 0 we get phi is equal to u into x uh, and uh, for psi is equal to u into y. So, this represent the uniform flow. So, this results we can generalize to provide the velocity potential and stream function for a uniform flow at an angle alpha with the x axis as uh, shown in the previous slide. So, earlier this lines represent phi is equal to u x and uh, uh, psi is equal to uh, u, u y phi is equal to u x and psi is equal to u y for this slide here. And if you consider at an angle as shown here then we can represent the uh, psi and uh, phi like this. So, for uh, phi is equal to u into x cos alpha plus y sin alpha and psi is equal to u multiplied by y cos alpha minus x sin alpha. So, the results are now generalized to provide the velocity potential and stream function for uniform flow at an angle alpha. So, the, this is so called uh, uniform flow and the uniform flow is represented with respect to the potential function and then the stream function uh, as uh, phi is equal to uh, say uh, phi is equal to uh, ux and psi is equal to uy as shown here and uh, with uh, so this is phi is equal to ux and psi is equal to uy for the horizontal type of flow like this and uh, for inclined type flow it is phi is equal to u into x cos alpha where alpha is the angle plus y sin alpha and uh, psi is equal to u into y cos alpha minus x sin alpha. So, this is about the potential flow the uniform potential flow with respect to the uniform flow which we have discussed. So, this is the simplest uh, plane flow uh, as uh, discussed here uniform flow is the simplest plane flow described by either stream function and we have seen the stream function and uh, velocity potential. So, now the next uh, second kind of the uh, b b basic or elementary potential flow is uh, which we can represent is called the source and sink. Uh, uh, so the source and sink it is actually a, it is a purely radial flow type. So, say the fluid flow is radially outward from the origin perpendicular the, to the x y plane. So, the only we have to consider the the the, the v are the radial velocity here and this psi is equal to constant is uh, say this uh, the lines uh, represents the psi is equal to constant and this dashed lines represents the and the phi is equal to constant is represented here. So, if we consider the the flow with respect to an angle theta, so we can define now the various values of the uh, we can de uh, derive this uh, potential function and the stream function. So, now let us consider a volume uh, m, m as the volume rate of flow emanating from the line per unit length as shown in this figure. If m is the the, the volume of uh, ra rate of flow emanating from the line per unit length. Now, uh, if we use the consideration of mass, we can write this as 2 pi r into v r is equal to m. So, with respect to this figure, we can write uh, m is equal to 2 pi r uh, into uh, v r. So, r is shown here the, if we consider this this the radi radial distance which we consider here. So, 2 pi r into v r is equal to m where v r is the radial velocity. So, finally, uh, for the considered source or sink we can write v r is equal to m divided by uh, say 2 pi r. So, with respect to this consideration of mass we can write v r the radial velocity v r is equal to m by 2 pi r and uh, for the source or sink type uh, say 
potential flow we can say the 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 tangential velocity is equal to zero since the 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 as defined here the it is a purely radial flow there is no tangential components for the velocity so velocity v r is equal to the radial velocity is equal to m divided by 2 pi r and v theta is equal to 0. So, that we can write del phi by del r the which is the radial velocity come on del phi by del r is equal to m by uh, 2 pi r and finally, we can get an expression for phi uh, the the potential function phi is defined as uh, phi is equal to m divided by 2 pi natural log r after integration of this expression del phi by del r is equal to m by 2 pi r we get an expression for the the velocity potential phi as m by 2 pi r m by 2 pi natural log r. So, this represents as far as the source sourcing is concerned as shown in this figure uh, the uh, the potential function phi is represented as m is equal to m divided by 2 pi natural log r where m is the volume rate of flow emanating from the and the the line of line per unit length as shown in this uh, figure. So, if m the, so the the volume rate of flow if m is positive the flow is radially outward and the flow is considered considered to be a source flow. So, if the the if m is positive the flow is radially outward and the flow is considered to be a source flow and if m is negative the flow is toward the the origin and the flow is considered to be a sink flow. So, this is either with respect to the domain which we are considering what is coming or what is going out with respect to that particular point we can define as the the whether m is positive then it can be the the source flow and uh, m is negative it can be the sink flow. So, the flow rate m is the m is called the strength of the source or sink. So, we have we, can, we have considered same the source or sink. So, as so shown here either it can be coming to the, the what is putting to the domain or taking going out of the domain. So, it can be a, a sink or a source depending upon the case whether m is negative or positive. So, where m is m is defined here the uh, m is the volume rate of flow emanating from the line per unit length. So, this m is called uh, with respect to the the phi the potential function phi is equal to m by 2 pi natural log r. So, here this m is called the the strength of the source or sink. So, now with respect to now we will see the stream function. So, with respect to stream function uh, we can define uh, this uh, say in polar coordinate system or cylindrical coordinate system we can define v theta is equal to the radio the tangential velocity v theta is equal to minus del psi by del r and the radial velocity v r is equal to 1 by r del psi by del theta. So, with respect to this since the for the source or sink uh, the it is a purely radial flow we can uh, say that v theta is equal to 0. So, that here del psi by del r is equal to 0 or uh, say now finally, v r is equal to 1 by r del psi by del theta. So, this is the the radial velocity which we have already seen. So, this is equal to m by 2 pi r. So, which will give the stream function is equal to m by 2 pi uh, theta. So, finally, uh, we can derive the say now uh, here del psi by del theta. So, now this we can integrate. So, that we will get uh, say uh, psi is equal to m by 2 pi theta. So, this gives the stream function. So, for uh, a source or a sink type flow which is described here uh, source or sink which is a purely radial flow here we have derived the potential flow as uh, the potential function as and the velocity potential as m by 2 pi natural log r and then the stream function m is equal psi is equal to m divided by 2 pi theta to uh, m divided by 2 pi into theta m divided by 2 pi into theta where uh, m is the the uh, the st strength of the source or sink uh, which we consider. So, now we got both the stream function and the potential function. So, the uh, now we can the as far as source sensing is concerned uh, which we, we we represent here. So, for source and uh, sink say if you represent the source and sink the streamlines are just uh, radial lines just as we can see here. So, the streamlines are the radial lines and then 
the the equipotential lines are the concentric circles centered at origin uh, which is uh, shown in the previous figure. So, uh, here this shows the the the, the stream lines are radial lines and the 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 equipotential lines are concentric circles centered at the origin uh, as shown in figure. So, point source of sing is a point of singularity in the flow field since here the radial velocity when r tends to so r is defined he, like here so this is the origin so uh, from origin when r tends to zero so this to source of strength is put on the origin so when r tends to zero you can see that uh, the the radial velocity v v r radial velocity v will be tending to become uh, infinity as per the uh, definition so we, we can see that there will be a singularity may occur uh, at the uh, point source. So, sing it is a point of singularity. So, since uh, V r is defined as say m by 2 pi r. So, when r tends to 0 as shown here when r is uh, tending to 0 you can see that uh, V r becomes uh, v, v, v r will be tending to infinity and then this uh, source sourcing the point source sourcing become a, a, a singular singularity it is a point of singularity where uh, say r is tending to 0 and v, v r becomes infinity which is called a singularity singular point. So, source so, or <coughs> sing is a sing we can represent as a single a singularity. So, this concept of source and sing have a large number of applications especially say if we consider the porous media flow say whenever sometimes say if there are not much complexities for the flow if the flow media is homogeneous isotropic many cases we can consider if there is a recharge well or if there is a pumping well this applications of the the potential theory we can apply we can approximate and then we will be tr trying to get the the so, so the we are trying to solve the problem with respect to the in the ground the porous media flow these are some of the applications which we will be uh, discussing later. So, source and sink uh, the uh, with respect to this now the point source of sink is a point of singularity as discussed and now the third one is so called the vortex flow. So, this vortex flow uh, it is a flow in which the streamlines are concentric circles. So, first we discuss the uniform flow, second one we discuss the source sensing and third type of uh, basic or elementary potential flow is called the vortex flow. So, the vortex flow is the flow in which the streamlines are concentric circles and the velocity along each uh, streamline is inversely proportional to the distance from the center. This kinds of flow is called a vortex flow and the vortex motion can be either rotational or irrotational. This vortex flow can be either irrotational say vortex motion can be either rotational or irrotational. So, uh, this represent the the, uh, the irrotational type where which we have discussed here uh, the uh, velocity uh, the flow is the flow the streamlines are concentric circles and velocities. Uh, along each streamline is inversely proportional distance as shown in this figure. So, phi constant is this lines the, the dotted lines here and these lines represent the psi constant lines and then uh, we can define the potential function with respect to this as phi is equal to k theta where um, for, for k, k is a constant. So, theta is shown in this figure. So, phi is equal to k theta and psi can be represented as psi is equal to minus k natural log r. So, finally, since in this case uh, the the, uh, the vortex flows V r is equal to the radial velocity component is equal to 0 and V theta is defined as 1 by r del phi by del theta which is equal to minus del psi by del r. So, we get this is equal to V theta is equal to minus k by r. So, for vortex flow we defined phi is equal to k theta the potential function for vortex uh, flow is defined as uh, phi is equal to k theta and psi is equal to minus k natural log r where k is a constant. And if the fluid uh, were rotating as a rigid body as we have already uh, shown earlier such that V theta is equal to K 1 R where K 1 is a constant. Uh, so, this type of vortex motion is rotational and cannot be discussed with respect to velocity potential. So, the vortex flow can be 
either can be rotational or irrotational. So, for rotational vortex, first we, 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 we call the rotational vortex as forced vortex. Say, for example, the motion of a uh, fluid, uh, the motion of a liquid contained in a tank that is rotated about its axis with angular velocity omega, this is called a rotational vortex. And uh, then irrotational vortex, say for example, the free vortex, the swirling uh, motion of the water as it drains from a bathtub. So, this represents a irrotational vortex. So, the irrotational vortex is called a free vortex and uh, uh, for example, the sailing motion of the water as it drains from a bathtub is called irrotational vortex and rotational vortex is called a forced vortex. So, the motion of a fluid contained in a tank that is rotated about its axis with angular velocity omega. So, this is called rotational vortex and also we can have combined vortex. So, the combined vortex is uh, the forced vortex as a central core and the velocity distribution corresponding to that of a free vortex outside the core. So, that we can write V theta is equal to omega into R where R is greater than less than or equal to R 0 and V theta is equal to K by R as represented earlier where the, uh, the v, v theta is the tangential velocity and K is the the constant which we considered. So, the what the vortex flow can be either rotational vortex which is called as forced vortex or it can be a rotational vortex called free vortex or we can also have combined vortex which is called a forced vortex as defined. So, uh, this is about the, the uh, vortex flows. So, now further we will be discussing about the, the uh, uh, circulation with respect to the uh, vortex flows and then further we will be discussing uh, the doublet and then uh, the, the combination of this all these ba elementary basic flows uh, to uh, represent complex flow system which can be in certain places we can apply to for the real fluid flow problem. So, this we will be discussing in the next lecture.